Welcome to Supercharged, a podcast focusing on the how and why of renewable energy and the passion behind the movement. Each week, we introspectively interview those who have taken the time to understand their personal why. Supercharged is a thoughtful journey through renewable energy, sustainability, and an integrated lifestyle. Subscribe and listen each week as we chat with thought leaders, influencers, and those simply deciding that there is a better way. This is Kevin Pruitt with the pilot episode of Supercharged Green, the podcast that talks about how to integrate this sustainable lifestyle into everything you do. And we want to talk to influencers and and people that really have a passion in this space. And I couldn't think of a better person to start our pilot episode than my friend Katie Ward. Katie, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. It is great to see you again. And I just want to start off with a with a basic question every time we have this podcast. Number one, how how would you define when you hear the term green, when you hear the term sustainable, define those for me in your terms? Yeah. Um, I think the easiest way to understand it is when we look at nature, at like a regular, like a forest ecosystem, nothing is wasted, no energy is wasted. You know, the the soil grows the trees, which make leaves. Eventually it dies, it becomes soil again. It's this beautiful closed system with, you know, all kinds of various life, but nothing is wasted. And, you know, we're, even though we've created magnificent civilization, we're still a part of that nature. And I think it's easy to think about sustainability as like be nice to the earth in kind of this like cartoony um, Captain Planet kind of way. But when I think about defining it, I think about it in terms of what would life be like if everything we consumed and did um, and created was a closed system and our outputs benefit someone else and their outputs benefit the ecology again. And also that it's really, really possible because nature is doing it around us all the time. Um, yeah, that's how I define it. I, I mean, I have heard so many people try to define this and define it on their own terms. I have, I have yet to hear such a succinct and clear definition of this, of being a closed system. I, I love that, that metaphor that you, you just, you know, kind of described. And so based on that, so how do you think that affects, you know, how you live? It, what's, how do you integrate that into your own life? Yeah. Um, well, one other little caveat about sustainability, and this will go into how I live it in my life, but um, sustainability isn't necessarily either just planet and green. It's also, I think, because we're humans, it also involves social. So we talk about like social impact and social justice and activism and sustainability is that too. You know, can we live lives with each other that um, are mutually beneficial? And so um, kind of in those realms, for me, um, it started with Honestly, I didn't really start thinking about it as an, a life orientation until I learned about composting. Um, and it just struck me how we're the only species on earth that doesn't, our waste doesn't go back to the soil. And it's really simple to compost. And, you know, now if I have to throw a banana in a garbage can, I have this like visceral, you know, reaction. <laughs> um, but that's, that's one of the things that's really simple. And then um, I love, I love the game of finding things that I'm going to use, whether it's clothing or furniture or, you know, a blow dryer, whatever it is, um, that someone's used already. And to me, they like have more of a story and there's just so much in circulation already. Um, so those are some practical things. And then on the other side, um, my work, I'm a copywriter and I'm a brand strategist and I work with sustainable companies, um, whether it's product companies that have, you know, really fair trade and positive sourcing or personalities who are all about transformation, um, transforming your mindset, um, 
I still find that working on the mindset of people helps to bring them to a level of awareness about, you know, um, so even the personal work I've done on myself to interact with other people with more awareness, I would call sustainable, making my life and my existence, my ability to give value more than I take right. um, is, is, is also more sustainable. Um, and then the last one is I just started last year um, in the middle of the pandemic, I started a newsletter and kind of online magazine about, um, wow, like our, our system seemed to be breaking. You know, we have this, this virus and the way that life has worked is not serving in all the ways it did and what's going on. And so I just started to dig into now that you know, our eyes have been opened to the end of the usefulness of our current systems. Um, what is the new way to do things? What if we could do things more sustainably? Um, from thinking more sustainably, relating to each other to how do we buy, how do we, you know, kind of the gamut. Um, it's called reset return. And I'll talk about it more, you know, as we go on, but that was the other way to keep myself informed um, from the research I have to do to, to maintain it. I mean, it's one thing to, to kind of like know these things, you know, just, just, uh, yeah, I, I just have mental assent to these things. I, I, I would agree with you, but what really, I mean, how do people internalize this driver when you really want to dig down in the, the whole Simon Sinek of it, you know, I mean, what's the why behind, uh, why this is important. I, I'm really, can, I'm really, I want to peel back these onions and get down to the, the very base level. What gets you out of bed in the morning? What drives you in this direction? Yeah, that why, um, that's the best question. Um, and I think there is, there's a fundamental shift in mindset. Um, and I'll kind of paint the picture of it. So what we're used to is an industrial Western consumerism, consumerist or consumerism driven mindset, right? Mm -hmm. And the kind of the values there are progress and individuality and achievement um, and convenience quite a bit. And that set of values and that mindset, although it's led us to, you know, unimaginable technology and convenience and all of those things at the same time as a culture we've increasingly become more sick more reliant on prescription medication more anxious more depressed sleeping less um all of those things we're like it's it's not leading us to a place of well-being um and so yeah, i i notice that it's interesting how you know, the climate crisis has become a crisis in the public eye now. And it's, it's paced with anxiety, depression, you know, the things that are plaguing people that really are not normal. Like we think of them as normal now, but they're really not. Right. And so what is the mindset shift that it takes to go from this like industrial consumerism, you know, it's just like the the radio buzz that's there always to a totally new mindset um, that is oriented to giving more value than we take and harmony, like genuine harmony. Um, I, my why is that I, do I really believe that it's possible to live sustainably and have that harmony and like really be able to savor physical existence on the planet, as well as the relational, emotional, all the other kinds of fulfillment that we have. Um, and that a, a sustainable way of living and thinking and being um, actually leads us to more fulfillment and wholeness and balance and less stress. Um, and so my why is that cultural shift, that mindset shift that is a, it's a, in inside to out transformation um, that I think people are starting to reach for. And I think that's why it's a conversation. And I think that's why the pandemic was such a powerful catalyst for people to see like, 
you know what, this whole industrial paradigm has been useful and there's got to be more. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think, I mean, I've, I've used the expression, I mean, you know, the coronavirus or COVID was like the global reset button. Mm -hmm. You know, we literally hit a reset button, but the, the problem with the reset button is that it has to, something has to restart. And when, you know, it's like, you know, people have talked about, you know, how we're shifting in like how we work, like, are we going from more kind of the brick and mortar to more of a remote workforce type, you know, model. And it doesn't matter because we're, we'll never go back to where we were pre 2020. I mean, it, it's changed indelibly. I mean, there's no, there's no going back it now. What is the new normal going to, going to look like? And I mean, I knew that, that I needed to ask you to be the, the first guest on this podcast, but I had no idea that the depth that you were going to start unpeeling those layers, because I love the way you, you talked to your, when you're, it's like, you didn't come on here and go, you need to recycle you know, that, that end no. of podcast, you know, recycle, <laughs> throw the banana peel in the, in the compost bin, not the trash, the trash bin. And, but you know, it's, it's much, it's so much more, it's so deeper than you just came eye to eye with an earthworm in a compost pile. And you just, you know, you had, you had an epiphany. I mean, I can see that there are so many like forces at work that have caused you to really think through these things pretty deeply. And I mean, I love the way you talk about sustainability as, as a, a closed system that is so much bigger than don't litter, you know, I mean, that, that's kind of the, you know, the, the screaming message is take care of the planet, you know, but it's, it seems to be so much more than that in your life. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, um, like if it's possible to live a, a deeply fulfilling life that's healthy um, in all forms, you know, then I want to find out how. And what I notice in taking that mindset on is the normal of, you know, relationships that don't work and mental and emotional health issues and physical health issues. And which I've had, you know, my fair share of um, at 28, um, which, all of those things to say, it only drives this like, okay, humans, if we can invent what we've invented so far, then we can innovate a way to um, have a fulfilling existence that's in alignment with nature. And to me, logically, it follows that mm -hmm. um, we wouldn't be more unhappy living closer to the way nature design the, the designs of nature, right? You know, exactly. Effortless, really. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, absolutely true. And and uh, I mean, it, you see, you're getting so good. You're answering questions before I ask them. So you know, because I was going to say, was you know, was there a time in your life that you can look back and you can say, oh, here's these major milestones. These, I'm not, I don't don't want you to go into your health history, but I mean, like, I had this this major you know crisis that just caused me to wake up and say, you know, there's got to be a better way. Yeah, there's been a few. Um, I mean, it probably started for me when I have I have the most wonderful family. I'm like crazy about my family. We're really close. Um, and my parents didn't stay together. And so as a young person, I remember making this vow where I was like, all right, there must be things that we don't see about ourselves that get in the way even when we have the best intentions. Mm. And that led me on this journey of studying communication. And now I'm a copywriter yeah. <laughs> and a brand strategist. And, um, you know, I kind of have my own faith journey that has led to a lot of this like optimistic or idealistic thinking that's like, well, you know what? If it's possible. <laughs> so that's partially faith, but partially also um my like study of the hero's journey. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my dad is a professor and yep. I've probably told you about it before, but um, just how many stories you have the hero and really what drives them is this internal, um, there's an external problem, but there's an internal longing for something to be whole again. Mm -hmm. And um I think that's that's part of where my drive for impact and social justice and you know 
I think this, the, like the climate crisis is the coolest hero's journey ever because it's the first time, you know, in human history where every continent of human beings has been called to one mission. It's like, don't die, you know, like don't burn up the planet. <laughs> and um, for, for to have one rallying cry that's kind of like critically urgent uh, for all of us is, I mean, that's like a movie. Yep. And I've always kind of viewed life that way as this like epic story um, that you can become the hero of. And so when I started to look at sustainability and impact, um, I remember thinking like, man, this whole sustainability movement has just been branded the wrong way. Cause it seems like humans are the bad guys and the earth is the victim. And like, that's not a very compelling story. But when we think about, you know, humans are the heroes of this character development to um, rise above our past mindsets and our fear-based, like we need convenience and um, instead move toward, can we all move together towards something that actually makes us happier? Um, Sounds like a great story to me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And, and you are exactly right. I, I am, I'm so thankful that there are people that are leading the way like yourself that, that have this, this optimistic, um, not falsely optimistic, but optimistic because you can, you can kind of see there's a, there is a, there's a way to do this. There's a way to do this well. And there's a way to tell the story well behind it. And had, I mean, obviously this has influenced how you even have framed your business, so let's talk about that just a little bit about how, you know, this has affected every area of your life, but specifically, you know, how did you kind of create, it's, it's like, it seems like you created your business after you've kind of developed this, this kind of, you know, um, ecosystem or value system that, that you have. Yeah, I, man, so for out of the gate, out of college, I was just like, I would have lived under a bridge before I took a job that I was not going to be passionate about, honestly. And um, which meant a lot of chaos for a while for me, but worthy chaos. <laughs> um, so I initially thought like, well, why don't I work with nonprofits? Because I want to do something purposeful and impactful. And um, I did. I started exploring working with nonprofits and I just... I found, I remember having a mentor who ran a company that was an events business and starting to learn about how business works. And when I tried to work with nonprofits and then was learning about how business works, I, there was a gap in sustainability for me. Mm -hmm. I was like, how can we change the world with something that is a, that, that isn't a closed system? And like nonprofits are critical and really important. You know, I don't have anything to bad, bad to say about them. And it, it still left something for me to discover about a new way of doing things. Right. And so I ended up um, in San Diego going to this event um, where there was this representative talking about a new way to incorporate your business as a public benefit corporation. And he was talking about the fourth sector, which is, you know, if there's government is one sector, nonprofits are another sector, and businesses, businesses are a third then the fourth sector is this combination of nonprofit and business mm -hmm. where you have a profit bottom line, but you also have a social and environmental bottom line, right. people bottom line. Right. And um, that it could actually be incorporated into a business model. And so as soon as I saw that talk, it was like light bulbs, fireworks, got it. This is, I'm going to do branding. I'm going to write for this kind of business. And um you know, ultimately that had the most purpose for me because I'd, I'd started to look at media and brands as the most influential voices in our culture, um, right. more than, especially in the States, more than like a religion or a hometown or a family, or, um, it was media that was infiltrating our thoughts the most. Mm -hmm. and so it's like, all right, well, if I can amplify the voices of, um, the companies that are teaching this mindset of really sustainability and awareness and giving value and creating value, 
um, then that's the way to influence culture is by helping with brands. And um, yeah, exactly, absolutely. That, that, this is a great segue into into where I was kind of heading with the you know as we're as we're starting to kind of wrap this up today. But just the idea that you know who who would you think is doing this well? You know who's who are some individuals that might be one or two individuals, or who's a, a corporation out there that you think is really doing this well? Yeah, um, you know, I just watched this documentary called Seeding Change. And it was made by a group of companies that like came together. And I forget what their, their like mastermind is called, but um, Sambazon is in there, Gayaki, Yerba Mate, Numi Tea, um, they're all in there. But the cool thing about the documentary was that it traced how um, like Sambazon, for example, found a product of the rainforest that basically by switching from palm tree harvesting to this berry harvesting, they were able to keep the forest in place and provide for multiple, multiple communities. And it, it ended up being more profitable, you know, throughout the whole supply chain. Uh, and each of those businesses had a model like that, where they chose a product that, you know, saved the environment and supported the people. And on a product side, I think that's really inspiring. Um, another one, Reformation is a clothing brand based out of LA and you know, fashion is the number two worst for the planet after oil. And um, so Reformation comes along and it's beautiful clothing, but they are vertically, they have a vertically integrated supply chain, which means they own every part of their supply chain. Um, and their factory in LA is um, renewable energy based. Mm -hmm. And there's like a garden of the factory and um, their fabric is like deadbolt fabric from past, you know, lines that they've done and vintage fabric. And um, so just the level of creativity that Reformation and many other companies um, have gone to, to um, reuse and also support you know people that need work um, right a couple of my clients have had a jewelry company client that their stand is for can we represent native american art and southwestern art without appropriating um that's a big one too um and then of course there's like patagonia which mm -hmm. is, I just think one of the reasons I respect Patagonia and, and Ben and Jerry's as well. Um, first of all, they're both B Corps. So B Corp is like the great umbrella yep. of where to find these companies. But um, those two specifically have dared to take on political and social rights issues as well. And their findings have been that even though people have threatened to boycott and not buy their stuff, their core buyers actually appreciate that they're taking a stand, um, you know, for fair voting rights and not destroying monuments and national parks and um, things that they care about. And and they those brands that you talked about, not only do they have causes that they're passionate about, they are their products are exceptional. Yeah, I mean, you you talk about the triple bottom line. I mean, the way to the way to influence people is is often through excellence. You know, make excellent products make excellent art which by the way listeners I, I want to encourage you to do a little digging around the stuff that katie produces her art is is superb so it is it is such a and then so much of an expression of who she is i mean just it's like lived out on the on the canvas but katie as we wrap up today i, I want you to kind of talk a little bit so if people want to want to find out a bit more about you and and what really, you know, drives you? I mean, what are some places that, that uh, would be a really good place for them to start? Yeah. Uh, well, the, the newsletter and the magazine I mentioned is resetreturn.com. And um, if you subscribe to the newsletter, I write these really fun, um, engaging. I spend a lot of time and put a lot of research into them. And every two weeks I send out on a Tuesday, send out the newsletter. Um, and then my, my business is New Story Marketing. And 
at that's the site, that's the domain. And I'm a story brand certified guide and copywriter. And so you'll see that on there. Um, and then for um, finding more regular, just staying informed about how how the world is changing in a positive direction. Um, my favorite two newsletters are, there's one called Good is the New Cool. And that is an, it's actually an advertising agency that came out with a great book, um, but they have a newsletter that's extremely informative. And then my friends at Cause Artist um, and Cause Artist follows lots of founders and startups and um, and bigger companies. Um, they have several podcasts and, you know, there are lots of activism and sustainability um, in business. So those are my favorites. So as we wrap up today, I mean, often I would, I would do the closing of the podcast, but I would actually like you to do that. So if you're talking to our listeners, what is one thing that they could do get up tomorrow morning, one thing that they could do positive that, that you think would affect their mindset and and have an impact yeah wow well i think actually the best and most enjoyable one is if you were to wake up tomorrow and make the whole day about actually savoring every part of your day from like when you eat breakfast how it feels to eat that food if you go outside what it looks like what the sounds are when you put on clothes how they feel um you know, if you use a set of dishes, use the same dishes for the whole day and really notice how they feel. Um, just that exercise kind of wakes you up to how, how much simplicity can be fulfilling and, and where your things come from and even being aware of the things that we have, you know. So that would be my my send off to you. Thanks for listening and be present all day tomorrow. <laughs> and that is a, what a way to end this first pilot episode of the podcast, Supercharged Green. Katie, I am so grateful you took the time to share with our listeners and, and it was just really good to reconnect with you. Have a great week. You too. Thanks, Kevin. We hope you enjoyed this brief respite to your busy day and also learn something not only about sustainability, but how you will now look at things differently. It takes all of us, and that is truly what makes this movement supercharged.